One, two, three. One, two, three. Hello, everybody. I am Daniel Moore, and welcome to the Affinity uh, Suite 1.8 overview. So, as of today of this recording, which is, I believe, February 26, 2020, uh, Affinity has decided to push out a 1.8 update, which includes a lot of uh, bug fixes and updates to their software, which is fantastic. So, uh, essentially right now you can see that in Affinity Designer they have a stock option which you can find in Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher. Now it is integrated into Affinity Designer as well, so that is just great. That is uh, fantastic. I usually keep mine up here with the assets, just so I can uh, click between the two. <clears throat> they also added new uh, presets for uh, Affinity Publisher, Designer, and Photo. So as you can see, you can now pick in a interesting sort of grid setup of what you would like to have your document be. So it can be A0, A5, whatever. That's print, print ready. Uh, pretty much the same thing, I think. Dimension lengthwise for sheet poster. 12 inch vinyl cover, 7 inch vinyl cover. This is pretty interesting uh, overall. So, also they have photos. I don't know what this would be used for, to be honest. Web. It even has the social media posts here. This is uh, Instagram, more than likely 10, 1080 by 1080. Social media story post. I don't know what that would exactly be. They also have devices. So, iPads. Uh, galaxy stuff, so that's pretty interesting. Architectural, I really don't know what these are. I would like to know, but you could, they also included templates. So you can make your own templates and just use them time and time again. So if you wanted to add a folder, you could uh, go link your Google Drive if you wanted to, or a OneDrive or whatever storage space you have them in. I think you could also link it from your desktop. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I have to play around with that later. So I am going to go into a new document, uh, just like let's make a new one in inches. I'm because I'm an American and I can pretty much just do inches only. Create the artboard. Let's go with CMYK8, <clears throat> and let's just create. So something else that they also did is that they added new Pantone colors. So. It used to be that you only had a couple of these, but now they added a lot more. So I think it was only CMYK coded, uncoded, pastels, or pastel and neons, and that was pretty much it. Now they have, I believe, metallics, coded, color bridge, formula guide, and go a uh, bridge, coded and uncoded and all that. I'm very curious to see what these are. I don't really know what these would do be like, but I know that the uh, coded and uncoded is mostly used for regular print. So uh, I'm just gonna quickly just draw out a rectangle and just choose a color. Maybe this. Coded. Okay. So you can see that this color now is this global color. A Pantone 2347CP. And uh, if you've worked in graphic design before, these uh, Pantone colors usually uh, are used to give you the most accurate uh, a trans transition between what you see on screen and what uh, comes out as a print. They try to get it as close uh, color-wise as possible. Obviously, uh, if you have a Pantone book, that usually helps a lot. At my work, we do, so uh, that's pretty good. Uh, da, da, da. trying to think what else they implemented. Don't really remember, but that was the big one. Oh, smart objects. So they allow you to embed smart objects in here. So I'm just going to use this real quick. So this is a mockup, a PSD mockup that uh, I have downloaded and I can use for uh, personal use. So what I can do here is, it's an embedded document, you can see that. If I double click it, it takes me into sort of like a Photoshop, 
a smart object sort of thing. So if I were to just make a quick logo in here or something, just like a quick little thing. real quick. Make this white, copy it, and now if I go into the embedded thing here, I can hide this and I can paste in here my little logo thing. I'll scale it down and I'll put it on top of this thing here, rotate it just so it fits the orientation, shrink it down just a little bit more. I'll group it together just in case too. And I'll make it multiply so it'll maybe do that or show the uh, printing texture on it. But I don't think it will, not unless we go to, I think, overlay. And even then, I don't think it does it too, too well. So I might have to copy and paste that a few times to uh, get that actually how that looks. So that doesn't look too, too bad. So now I can go back here and you can see that it's updated with the logo and everything. So that's uh, pretty awesome. You can do that with uh, pretty much PS any PSD thing you want now. So that's uh, pretty cool, a good step in the right direction. So I'm trying to think now. Uh, I think it only works, well, it works in every single application. But uh, in order to actually place the mock-up, trying to think, how do I get back to it? If you actually want to replace the design and stuff, uh, you might still have to be uh, going to the website photopia.com. They'll allow you to uh, also open up PSD files just like this. So that is pretty cool. Uh, one of the other updates is in Affinity Publisher, they have new smart uh, master pages where you can switch stuff out uh, easily. So again, just create a new document. I'm gonna make a couple pages, maybe about four. Eight and a half by 11, that's fine. Master pages, add a new master. We'll call it master B. Click OK. So this will be pretty cool. So like, uh, let's say this is your magazine cover. For this, we could make some uh, interesting frames that do that. There. And there as well. Maybe even make this one way bigger just to uh, make a point. So, you can see that these are now formatted with this stuff. So, if I were to go into my stock, I don't know, let's say, lady, enter, let's just click and drag, I like this one. You can see that the frame is now fit into this sort of thing, so that's cool. So this is being applied by the master page of, or the master A page, master page A, I can't talk. <clears throat> so I believe this is only applying to right uh, facing pages. So you can see this is page one, page two, I believe is this one, and page three. So let's say we wanted to do something sort of interesting with master page B, and you didn't want it to be applied to uh, this master page. So I'm going to click on this. Apply master, master B. Click OK. So now it has that, so if I go in here, it, you can't see it, but it's there. So now I'm going to do, like, I don't know, by king. Just click and drag that in here. And now it has that sort of interesting sort of thing. So if you were doing, like, a multiple page layout, and a lot of the... Uh, frames were pretty much the same size and stuff. You could do it like that, so that's pretty cool. 
I need to figure out uh, much more useful ways to use this. So this, but this is I can also I can already tell that this is going to be uh, pretty interesting. Affinity Photo got a bunch of uh, updates as well, mostly to do with photography and the like. Uh, this is all pretty much coming off the top of my head. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Uh, Preflight. Affinity Publisher now has Preflight. Just gotta find it. I think it's under Studio. Yes, Preflight. So profile default, I assume this sort of works like uh, Adobe InDesign's uh, Preflight. So if we check now, we'll get no errors, thankfully. But I, su I assume it would uh, tell us if there were any errors in here, so that's pretty cool. But like I was saying, Affinity Photo got some updates, got a, some more plugin support. I don't remember from what. Uh, you can read most of the details online on uh, Affinity's website, so that's pretty cool. But uh, that's pretty much mainly the main things I wanted to uh, talk about today. So uh, thank you for listening, and I appreciate you guys watching. If you like what you heard and saw, uh, please leave me a like down below and uh, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to try to be pushing out more uh, YouTube tutorials. So uh, thank you again for watching, and I will see you all later.